hair will actually implant into your body. If you zoom in on a microscope, it looks similar to a screw. There's no other solutions outside of surgery. I turned around and there was just this huge chunk of flesh that had been taken out of my body. It was sort of like getting hit by a car. I just woke up one day and I had this disease. I'm Dylan, I'm 27, and I have pilonidal sinus disease. When I was about 12 or 13, I came across a pamphlet for the army. I made the decision and that was exactly what I was going to do. From day one, I strove to be the fittest guy there. So things like running and working out were a huge component of my life. I remember waking up one morning and just feeling an immense pressure on my lower spine. That's when I had my first surgery. I still had the mindset that I'd finish the surgery and then I'd get straight back into training. However, it's, it's not how it played out at all. With pilonidal sinus disease, hair will fall into your pants and your buttocks rubbing against itself will actually implant hair into your body. And if you zoom in on a microscope with the hair, it looks similar to a screw. And eventually the friction from walking will end up embedding that hair follicle into your skin. So a lot of people will go through this and feel all the symptoms, uh, you know, tightness in their lower back, pain while sitting down, and they won't even, they won't even realize or think to get it checked and it can end up leading to that infection occurring in your lower back. I was in bed for 14 months straight with this disease. It's, it's called reoccurring pilonidal sinus disease, meaning it comes back. Once I had my fourth surgery, I remember waking up and I turned around in the bathroom and looked at my lower back and there was just this huge chunk of flesh that had been taken out of my body. Probably the size of a small uh, football, uh, which was a part of the operation. Uh, and I saw that and the hardest part of it was when that particular surgery didn't work again. Um, and I had to have further and further surgeries after this. And each time that I would go in to have another surgery, not knowing what I'd wake up to and see. Yeah. I went from being this really confident young man who was very confident in his body image to all of a sudden you can't sit down, you can't walk. I couldn't socialise with my friends. I couldn't see my family. I couldn't, couldn't live life, to be completely honest with you, yeah. to put some perspective in my life. I started reading books and reading about history and other people that had gone through um, severe hardships. That turned into an obsession. So I'd wake up early and I'd read books until I had to go to the hospital. Um, I'd get back from the hospital and continue reading. I turned reading and education into my main focus. I've got tattoos, I've got a moustache. Not many people would assume that this guy's reading every single night. That means that I can have some sort of continuation in my life um, when the physical aspects of it go. Most recently, I've, I've set up a charity called Brothers and Books. And what it does, it encourages people to share their stories of adversity, coupled with books that have helped them. I create community libraries with these life-changing books that people recommend um, and I place them in places like veteran centres and hospitals where people are likely to be going through hardships. I think if I was to get told that I was having this surgery again, I think now I'm, I'm equipped to deal with it. Most recently, I've had the top of my butt completely cut off and I have a large scar that runs from my lower back all the way down. I'm uncaring about what it looks like. I'm just happy that I can get outside again and start walking and seeing my friends. It is your buttocks, it's your butt. 
Nobody wants to talk about your butt in a workplace, in a, in a pub. Even talking today is difficult. I hope that speaking about this publicly, when someone's going through this in the future, when they Google the disease, it actually comes up with something where they can see someone else that's been through it, just to let people know that they're not alone. If you're experiencing symptoms similar to what I've described, check out the link below.